All right, welcome back. That's from the um, ASIS 2023, some of the highlights there. Well, moving on, banks as gatekeepers of the financial system battle unseasonally against money laundering and terrorist financing. But national anti-money laundering efforts focus primarily on domestic risk, and as a result, often they seem to lag. I have international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joining me now in this discuss. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights. Thank you, Justin. Yes, it is indeed my pleasure. Let's talk about this money laundering um, and specifically what risk they pose to the stability of the financial sector because we know we have um, a law, the anti-money um, anti laundering law and all of that. But over time, uh, it's as though the effort uh, uh, we are doing back here at home is just like um, a scratch in the surface. How do you react? I totally agree with you. Um, you know, when you do well, anything that has to do with money laundering, sometimes it's, it's, it's external. It's um, collaboration between um, uh, various nations that bring it to success. Because uh, when you talk about money laundering, yeah, some of those funds are not within your system. They are coming outside your system, either to fund terrorism, either from drug traffickers trying to invest in your economy. So it's sometimes not something that you have control over. Uh, the domestic one, even if you look at Nigeria, we not even have control over that because when you talk about the domestic one, you're talking about um, even exchange exchange rate. You saw the CBNC, they are going to clamp down on some uh, illegal funds that have found their way and some people are busy having uh, illegal money, uh, 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 illegal bureau really change in terms of cross-border funding. So it's more or less a cross-border thing, so it, it has to be a comprehensive uh, situation whereby a uh, country collaborates. And I think that collaboration has been going on for a while now, but uh, maybe the desired result has not been uh, achieved uh, the way everybody expects. But I think it's still working in progress, especially when you look at our country in Nigeria. Before now, you have a lot of these issues coming up but of, of, of recent. What we've seen, we've seen a clamp down, we've seen a reduction in some of these um, crime, especially if the anti-money agents, uh, anti-money laundering agency that we have in the country, the EFCC and the ICPC are really on top of their game. Uh, yeah, fine. You have said that indeed uh, we need to collaborate uh, with um, the international organizations and of course um, other countries across the continent and of course globally to achieve all of that. But over time, let's look at the activities of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, most of the times uh, there are all these uh, red flags and um, checks by commercial banks. You know, sometimes when you deposit some money, uh, the banks uh, would actually hold forth to it and put like... Um, um, <coughs> A restriction to it when, when those um, the sources or the origins of those funds are actually you know suspicious. But sometimes uh, it's as though um, there are some bad eggs in the in the system uh, who actually help um, these particular crimes to foster. Because I see uh, most people you know sometimes they talk about uh, how uh, people use their accounts to perpetrate crime and then um, the banks are in the know. What can we do about these particular issues that arise often time? I think that has to do with the uh, with the financial authorities. Um, like you said, most of crimes, financial crimes, are we always say there's an insider. It's not something that is done. Uh, they are always in cartel, and some of those cartels are, are right inside the financial financial systems. That's why they are able to succeed. If you talk about red flag, and you, you realize that Nigeria is one country that have not really put so much emphasis on trying to tackle the red flag issues, because ordinarily when you have deposit one million let me give you an example in mm. some states let me use the united states of america if your account is always maybe you always have like one thousand dollars two thousand dollars maximum you have five thousand dollars then immediately all of a sudden this fee even six thousand dollars or seven thousand dollars they raise the flag they say you know what that means there's a challenge here what's happening here you need to investigate you need to investigate and you know when it comes to investigation sometimes in Nigeria, it takes forever. Uh, I mean, when they now block your money, you have to write letters and that. No, when they say they want to investigate, within, within 48 hours, they're able to come up with a solution that this is what's happening, this is what's happening. And then they apply the big stick if there's any need for that. Although Nigeria will have such policy, but like you said, there's always an insider coordination because we have some accounts in Nigeria that you're not supposed to have maximum of 2,000, 200,000. By the time it gets above that by being one naira, 
is supposed to be a red flag. But you see that um, um, some of the uh, some of the financial frauds are committed to these accounts. Maybe they put in two hundred thousand and uh, two hundred and fifty thousand. The, 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 the authority that's supposed to be on the look and look before you know they transfer this money to other accounts, and so they keep on uh, transferring, moving these funds in around banking space, the financial space, and nobody seems to stop them. I think um, it's it well done to, we have not been able to put our feet down and apply the law when it's necessary. And I keep saying it, that Nigeria is not devoid of any law. What we have is that not being able to implement or, or, or when needs mean implement the, 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 the fines or the, the penalty that will come with such um, 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 issues in the system. All right. Over time, the International Monetary Fund um, has actually identified uh, countries uh, who are actually po are potential high risk and to this, uh, you know, fraudulent um, transactions. Uh, but let's bring it closer home. We've had over time the, uh, you know, the perpetration of um, light arms am ammunition. You know, over time, you see people, you know, dealing in um, arms and ammunition, and over time, the proceeds still seem to find their way into banks. But just how? I know we've talked about the anti-monetary laws and everything, but just what more can be done to actually follow this money, specifically for uh, items um, which are not really so, so, so certain as per uh, their origin, really? Because I'm really bothered about the issue of um, uh, proliferation of um, arms and ammunition into the country and integrity is on the high. We'll see uh, all of um, this terrorist um, having, um, you know, these arms and um, they have funds that, uh, which are actually being moved uh, all over the country without even going through the banking system. But somehow they still find themselves, or this money still find themselves back into the system. I think um, the, the, the security apparatus also are uh, culpable in this uh, area. Then the judiciary also, unfortunately, I'm bringing them in also, and also the Economic and Financial Bank Commission also. Um, that you you know forget the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit also we have all these units so they are supposed to be the ones that should be uh, up 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 their game because uh, when I said that is because when I said the judiciary because we've not seen uh, people being sentenced to jail for financial uh, crime especially money laundering we've had a lot of cases before now the former CBN governor told us that they are investigating some people they change even in the former national security advisor. Uh, about a lot of people the chain that were involved in listed form of terrorism and, and that no 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 justice have come out from that rather we've seen them uh, um, country like south um, united arab emirates sending uh, nigerians that they felt are financing terrorism here in nigeria sending them to jail over there in uh, in saudi arabia rather than nigeria sending them to jail so it's all boiled down to the legal system or maybe the way we have been able to handle uh, issues, we've not been able to handle it professionally, or we've not been able to get um, the legal side of it for judge for justice to be served, and that is one. And then two again, you cannot um, write off the financial institution. Also, they have also been copied because of maybe the pressure in trying to make sure that um, they meet up to shareholders' um, demands and all that. So that also is a major challenge. So uh, definitely, I think it boils down to the security agencies because, like they said, some of these funds are not spirit. They come in and they find they are going to the banking space. Some of them come through the border even. You, you see a lot. Some of them can even come to the seaport. Some of them come to the airport. We we'll see where uh, uh, security agents, agents have intercepted money. But unfortunately, it's local money they always intercept. We've not seen whereby they said, oh, some foreigners were trying to bring in um, um, funds into the country to tons of millions of dollars, and they, are, they were stopped. So it's something that you, you need to do. And then when you are coming into our countries, in other countries, you see, if you have above this amount, above this amount, you have to declare it. And if you don't declare it, if it is found on you, that where fund will be confiscated. But we, we don't see that when it comes to Nigeria. We just see people just come in, declare their funds, and they are not allowed. Because it's not that way you declare those from in other countries. You are asked to go and fill up a form um, to say, that, okay, you brought in social money, and then by that they will be able to monitor how you spend this money, whether it was brought in for other um, activities that are not legal. All right. Uh I, I'm actually bothered about the issue of um, KYC. I think it, it comes to play in all of this. And recently, the Central Bank of Nigeria has been hammering on it about how the banks uh, should actually play so um, 
highly on um, the issue of um, uh, KYC and, of course, uh, social media of some of their uh, customers. Because sometimes, sometimes I think it still boils down to that because uh, the, the banks themselves, that's um, the commercial banks, they don't really do their due diligence to understand what exactly their customers do. Because some of this uh, uh, money launderers, as it, as it were, find uh, successes uh, by using local businesses and pumping money to them and they, they say they are selling gold or doing all sorts of transactions. But at the end of the day, they're just laundering money, you know, for this um, unscrupulous people from cross-border. How far can yeah, we go KYC? Yeah, that, I think KYC works if the banks are ready to make it work. We, we don't, in these days we have PBNs. Uh, so it's always, uh, like I said, it's just because we don't want to work because uh, BBN is also there. Uh, you could monitor funds and uh, but you talk about KYC and uh, that's very important. But you know, in Nigeria, uh, you, 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 the banks um, staffs are also under pressure to perform, to bring in money into their banks, to make sure they get promoted. So they don't seem to do due diligence. They just want the fund in there, and so that they will be here. And it's like I said, it's only in Nigeria. You see somebody like you rightly pointed out. There's no history of high started his gold business. Somebody tells you that at the point he was an Okada rider or riding back, then all of a sudden he's building houses in Banana Island, he's having security apparatus to guide him all around town, and nobody seems to be saying anything, nobody seems to have a due diligence. In other developed society, they'll go right deep and say, there must be a precedent on how you made your money. You can't just wake up overnight and say you're trading on gold. And that also has to deal with the bank, but again, I think the security agency, because sometimes these people flaunt this wealth. And unfortunately, the security agency, the politicians tend to celebrate this. You remember issues whereby a senior special assistant to, to a governor flaunted so much wealth. And uh, I mean, he was a senior special assistant to the governor, and then he went to the U.S. and he was arrested for, 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 for financial crime. And today he's been sentenced to jail in the U.S. But if it is in Nigeria, and, and the reason the U.S. said they won't grant him bail was that they feel that it's a political risk that if he gets to Nigeria, he will not have justice. So... You see what I talk about the justice system, and I talk about uh, customers' pre pressure. I mean, banks staff are pressurized to get customers, and then again, we don't follow due diligence and we celebrate mediocrity. Uh, Justin, you are working in in, 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 in in a station now. All of a sudden, Justin owns a station, and nobody's asking how come, who are his partners, how did he get? It's okay for him to own a station because he's a professional. Mm -hmm. He could have. I've got everything ready and then own the situation. But you need to look at its funding. How did it get its funding? Today, the CBN is busy saying that um, they don't fund um, Bureau de Change. But we have seen that a lot of Bureau de Change still have these effects. How do they get these effects? So those are, uh, are, are issues that the financial institution need to deal with, not just the financial institution, the CBN also. But most especially, I think, the security agency, because in most developed economies, those that go after the people are the security agency working hand in hand with the banks. All right, I must say a very big thank you to you. We have been speaking to uh, Mukhtar, Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst, analyst, and we have been looking at the issue of money laundering and, of course, some cross-border crimes and the impact on the financial system. Well, many thanks for being a part of the show, Mukhtar. My pleasure, Justin. Do have a pleasant day. And you too. Well, that's the size of the show. That's as much as we can take on the show for today. Business Insights returns to your screens uh, tomorrow, same time. I am Justin Academia. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.